sitting here looking through these photos, I'm actually very impressed. The dynamic range on this film is just so evident now compared to what it used to be. And that's just something that I can really, really appreciate because before I kind of liked it. I thought it was cool, but now seeing the true capability of instant film, I'm pretty hooked. And I must say I'm going to be shooting a lot of this going forward. My initial test, though, was in very perfect lighting in a studio setting. So I got to take it outside to see what it's capable of. Let's check that out. What's going on y'all welcome back to the channel so you saw i took the polaroid camera the i2 with the new 600 black and white emulsion outside to a parade it's probably the least kind of ideal situation for you to take this film um, to go shoot tons of noise tons of chaos you know you can't really think straight often and of course the lighting got bright sunshine raining down on people and there's clouds coming in and out you know just not the perfect situation when you want to control uh, the lighting and get really specific tests but that's exactly why i took this film out there to, to do just exactly that using it a very uncontrolled setting where you can truly see how much this film is capable of and spoiler alert this film is very capable but of course it has its limits it's not peel apart film but i think it's actually pretty close and i know that's controversial but i'm going to say it anyways i think the new black and white emulsion with polaroid gets you pretty close to peel apart at least visually. Experience wise, it's something very different. There's no peeling involved, but it's still giving you some really quality images. And I think a lot of people are really going to love this film once the word really spreads and people start to get a hand on this new emulsion. So let's actually take a look at some of my favorite images from the parade shoot. I'll start with my absolute most favorite one, which is this image right here. So this particular image right here is of the girls that are sitting on top of the car as it's driving through the parade. I love this image. First of all, I just like the composition and I like the vibe and the actual imagery, the content, the people. But when we talk about testing the new 600 black and white emulsion, this film is a really good showcase of the film because you've got a lot of strong highlights in this image, especially on the sky and on the skin of the actual subjects. They're being lit directly by the sun above them. But then you've got a lot of dark areas in this photo as well, which typically would be pretty dark, maybe completely black in a you know, old school. When I say old school, I mean the previous version of the emulsion. But in this version of the emulsion, you actually have a lot of detail in this film. And it's honestly pretty astounding. Um, you have the inside parts of this car right here that are kind of shaded. Uh, my assumption is on the old Polaroid film that would have just been completely dark. But here you can see the driver, you can see the feet of the girls as they're sitting on top of the car. And then you can even see the texture on the seat that doesn't have a passenger. All of that would have been gone faded to black here. You've got actual detail. And then if you look up here at these trees, um, the trees are kind of dark as well, but there's still some detail in there as well. Um, you've got an interesting balance here of the highlights and the shadows. And it's just something to appreciate, you know? That's exactly what the whole point of this emulsion is, to give you a lot more dynamic range, and therefore a lot of more kind of optionality, creativity, whatever you want to call it. You can do a lot more with this film than you could before. Let's take a look at another example. In this example right here, you've got really strong contrast between the highlights and the shadows and i think this is a good example to show you the limits of this film you've got direct unimpeded sun hitting the sidewalk there and then you've got you know a shadowed area on this side which is where the buildings are and this film just obviously can't do it all i guarantee you if you shot this on regular color negative or black and white film you'd have all that data with no issue here you don't and you know like i said this film has its limits but even with its limits, the highlights, despite being blown out, have a nice kind of gradient to them. They fade nice, well not fade is the wrong word, but the, the gradient between the brightest highlight to where there's actually detail is a nice transition, let's put it that way. Um, but this, this shot was very challenging for the film to capture and I think did a decent job, all things considered. I like how this photo came out. 
I'll show you one more photo here. This is a photo I actually took not during the parade, but this was after the parade. I was just walking through the hood, saw an open garage, and I went in to see who was in there. I was kind of snooping, and this guy was working on bikes. So I just said, hey, can I take your photo? And he was like, of course, let's do it. In here, this exposure looks pretty awesome from my point of view. His skin and his face is the central point of the photo, and that's perfectly exposed for. And obviously, that's what I expose for with my Sakonic um, via manual exposure. But what I love about this image is that he's wearing a black shirt. The background behind him is kind of dark because it's kind of the far back of the garage. So all of that should be very, very dark and basically gone. Here, you've got detail. I don't know how evident this is on the scan because I use a pretty crappy scanner. But um, if you look at it here, like me as a person viewing this in real life right in front of me, I got some decent lighting coming from here. And I can see the difference between his shirt and the dark background. And on his shirt, there's a hint of texture. You can't really see it that well because his shirt is black. Um, and obviously there's kind of low lighting on there. But um, surprisingly, the transition here again is, is what looks good. I think that's the key thing with this film. The transition between the highest highs and the lowest lows and everything in between is very pleasing. You don't have that very kind of amateur look where things are just blown out and they're just completely useless in the frame, unless it's a creative choice. Um, sometimes, you know, you do this on purpose, but other times it's just the film couldn't really handle it. Now, there's a much better gradient between those two, and therefore it's a much more pleasing image to look at. So I really like this film as another example of that. Um, and just going back to some shots I took before. So this was at Policon under studio lighting, very, very perfect kind of scene, very controlled scene. And the limited dynamic range of that scene obviously helped this film as well. But even in that very controlled setting, I still think you would have gotten very different results between the old emulsion and this one. And in this one here, like I just absolutely love this photo because there is not one part of this image with the exception for maybe the very back of her, of her hair at the top of her head that has no detail. And her hair is dark, obviously, it's black hair. Um, and then the lighting is coming from the front. So anything in the back probably is not getting that much lighting. But everywhere else on this image, you've got detail. You've got detail under her neck, on her shoulders, you've got in the shadow area that's being cast by the hand. On the underside of her hand, you've got shadow detail. Um, and then in the glasses, these are black reflective glasses, like plastic vinyl. So the shiny parts obviously catch the highlight, but then you still have detail in the parts that aren't catching any of that highlight. So just a really, really good example here of how good this film can perform, especially when you treat it nicely and play into its strength. Um, if you do the same exact scenario with the old emulsion, it'll probably still look decent, but you would not have the amount of detail you have in this photo right here. So as you can tell, I'm a pretty big fan of this new Polaroid film. I'm not sponsored by Polaroid. I don't have any affiliate links, but I wish I was, to be honest with you, because this is going to sell well, so I'd love to get a piece of that. But anyways, um, big proponent of this film. If we talk about some cons, there definitely are some cons. Right now, it's only limited to the uh, 600 film, which means that that's the film that has the battery cartridge in it, and that's meant for some of the older Polaroid cameras. I shoot with the i2, which doesn't need the battery in the cartridge, therefore I'm just wasting this battery over and over again. And you know, wasting resources like that, especially the plastic and the battery, it's not something I want to do. Another potential con, not so much for me, but maybe for a lot of people, is the price. This is definitely still more expensive than Instax, and that's just kind of a reality. Um, Instax is cheaper, and some people say better, and I actually do really like Instax as well, but this black and white process here is true black and white, meaning there's a chemical process that delivers a black and white image, as opposed to the Instax one, the Instax black and white film, that's not true black and white. Apparently, that has dyes in it that make it result in a black and white image. Many people probably won't care about that, and I don't think I care that much either, but it is cool to know that this has a real black and white chemistry process versus the other one not having it. In terms of results, honestly, I don't know if it makes that big a difference, but that is way cheaper. Instax wide per shot is cheaper than the Polaroid uh, Big Square. So just something to keep in mind. The only other con, and maybe this isn't fair, is that this new emulsion hasn't made its way to the color film yet. You know I'm not a huge proponent of the color film. I just don't like how it renders the colors themselves. Obviously there's limited dynamic range in that uh, process as well. And it's just not for me. I way much prefer Instax color film because it is a really beautiful film. Um, and especially when you put filters on it to really control what's coming in, you can get some absolutely fantastic colors. I have not had that look with Polaroid film just yet. But this will change from a con to a pro when that new emulsion makes its way to color. I'm hoping that that's already happened and they're just kind of testing it now, but 
a lot of rumors flying around and we'll see what happens but so far i haven't seen it when it does come polaroid hit me up i will gladly take this on the streets and shoot i think that's kind of the best way to summarize this product for me i do a lot of street photography and i like to go outside and interact with people and deal with the light that's already there i'm not doing anything outside i'm not bringing flashes i'm just using what's there and Having this new emulsion is giving me the best opportunity to capture the scene in front of me as it exists without any special lighting. Um, with color negative film and with regular black and white film, it's a breeze. I don't have to worry about anything. Any light scenario, I can create a nice photo in it. Um, with the old emulsion on this, it was a bit tougher, especially when you have that really big kind of spread and dynamic range in your image. Really bright highlights versus really dark shadows. There was no competition there. You had to pick one or the other or try to go in the middle and get neither. So it was a bit tough, but now we've got a really good fighting chance uh, with this new emulsion. So go cop some on Polaroid's website. I think that's probably the only place you're gonna find the monochrome 600 right now. Um, Cause when I was trying to buy it, it was kind of sold out everywhere, but they've got a ton of it and they ship pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I re-recorded this video because that light that's up there, you see it flickering, it's causing a mess in the entire scene. That wall and everything, like I was afraid I was gonna give someone a seizure, but now, it's under control. Let's actually end this video with the photos from the parade. I'm just going to put a bunch of them here. They're medium format, they're 35 mil, some color, some black and white. Um, that's what I was primarily shooting, but the Instax, sorry, not the Instax, the Polaroid that I was shooting that I just showed you, that was kind of the accent to the whole experience. And the people that I photographed loved it. All right, let's check out the images here. And to the next video, I'm out.